special services and home funding is currently on life support and headed for its deathbed thanks to a decision made by the liberal government to freeze that source of cash flow from adults with developmental disabilities and give it to children, which ignited a call for action protest outside of the Honorable Dwight Duncan's office on Thursday as families fight for what they perceive as rights. Michelle Friesen is the manager of the Windsor-Essex Family Network, who wants those with developmental challenges to be viewed as valuable members of the societal food chain and be given a fair shot to succeed and prosper in life. You're seeing the crowd out here today, um, guess put the smile on your face? It does, because you know what? I'm going to cry. It's not easy. It's not easy for these people to come. They have had to sacrifice their pain for workers out of their pockets. I see one parent here who called me over a year ago and he said, Michelle, they're taking care of the snakes along the parkway better than they're taking care of our families. Right on. Right on. And that is how families feel. They were hopeful for a few years with the Liberals. There is no more hope. Hope is gone. What would be your message today? My message today would be reverse the decision to cut off special services home funding at 18. Provide adequate funding to children, babies, toddlers, school age people, teenagers, and adequate funding to adults. And the adult funding that they want people to apply for, that needs to be on top of their SSH. Children who were promised funding prior to their 18th birthday between April 1st, 2012 and March 31st, 2013, who had previously been on waiting lists for cash, will no longer receive the money they were promised. Lise Weston also serves on the Windsor-Essex Family Network, and she provides some more sobering facts for families who may be faced with this tough situation. Families will become isolated because their sons and daughters will not be able to participate in the community. Families will become tired and exhausted, and then their health issues will get will also be compromised. And our sons and daughters will not have a qu good quality of life, like everyone's entitled. And I understand uh, some family, families that have already been approved for funding won't necessarily get it, but can you just the burden that they'll face? Um, absolutely. The, the per people that have been approved the funding is because they're turning 18 and um, the special services at home now is an adult uh, program, as you know. Um, they are just devastated because they have been waiting for many years and have been approved and now they will not see a dime of that money that they were promised. Maurice and Kathy Chauvin have been in the trenches now for 17 years, raising their son Joseph, attempting to give him the best quality of life possible, and they shed some light on the emotional and physical burden which will be placed upon their family if their funding disappears. And how are you uh, planning on functioning uh, without the funding if you don't get it? Well, we've discussed one of us would have to go part-time, mm -hmm. and we've discussed the cost to just have someone, if we decided to stay working, it would cost us probably close to $800 a month just to have someone to get Joseph off the bus and to be there until we get home from work. And can you tell me uh, how critical you uh, think events like today are through getting out the message? Very, 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 very critical. Very critical. I believe these people are making decisions uh, and have no understanding of what it's like to live with children like Joe, the demand that it puts on the families, and they're there making decisions on things that they have no understanding of. I'm Kevin McShann for CFTV.